But I would say it's maybe that continual evaluation process is the one thing that I'll probably just tag on in the end where you achieve your goal. It's not the end, right? Because your situation is going to change. It may not be what you thought it was. So eh, just going through that, that reevaluation, make sure what you originally wanted is actually what you got. This is Intentionally Ever After. Join Intentional Lifestyle Coach Joe Bukartek for a series of personal conversations and coaching sessions with various people about how living with intention shows up for them. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Intentionally Ever After. Today, for the first time ever, I'm very delighted and excited and admittedly a little uncertain to present to you the first time I am having a guest on for the second time. And today that guest is the great Justin Bukartek. Justin, welcome. Thanks, Joe. And I promise uh, the sequel will be better than the original. Good, good. I just re-listened to the first one and uh, it won't be that difficult to hit that mark. Oh, thanks. Thanks for that baseline. You're welcome. So, uh, Justin, who are you? Will you kindly introduce yourself to folks who don't remember our first episode from about two years ago? Yeah. I'm Justin, Joe's younger, wiser brother, husband to Lauren, father of two boys since our last discussion on the podcast, Uh, Aiden and Noah. Aiden just turned six. Noah just turned two. Aspiring uh, rock band drummer, failing miserably, mm. currently living in the Pacific Northwest. All is well. All is well. So the list of thank you for introducing yourself and welcome back. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, the, the questions that we went over last time are quite similar if not identical to the first time uh, or this time when, now that I've been doing this for two years, two plus years. Um, But what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about what has changed since we last spoke. And I, since we last recorded, I should say Um, significant amounts of things. And I'm curious if your definition, maybe we'll start here of living intentionally has changed. And no, you don't have to remember what you said before. But how do you currently define living intentionally? Well, similar to you, I also revisited our podcast this past week, Mm -hmm. because uh, it was fun going down memory lane. And I don't remember what I said, but I'm going to stick with that answer. But to give you like, where I see it now, um, you know, figuring out what you want and just taking the steps to do it. And to add to that, it's also going through a process of reevaluation to make sure that what you thought you wanted or achieved is actually still what you want. So I think uh, likely it won't be because I think that's going to change over time. So the only thing I'd add probably to my first answer you know, I think I said something like action of taking actionable steps. It sounded very formal. I hate listening to myself being recorded uh, after the fact, by the way. Yeah. Um, I found out that I say, uh, you know, those words, you know, about a hundred times. So I'm now subconscious or conscious uh, about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I would say it's maybe that continual evaluation process is the one thing that I'll probably just tag on in the end where you achieve your goal. It's not the end, right? Because your situation is going to change. It may not be what you thought it was. So eh, just going through that, that revaluation, make sure what you originally wanted is actually what you got. Love it. Yeah. yeah. And since we last spoke, you've uh, lived a few things. You've had the opportunity to evaluate and then reevaluate based off of actions that you took. Yeah. Um, and those actions you took were based off what you thought you wanted at the time. So just to update yeah. everyone who may or may not go back and listen, um, when we recorded, you were just about to, you had already decided to move from Colorado to Oregon, Oregon. Uh, Oregon. You had one of two children, although the second one was certainly coming along. 
and uh, catch us up a little bit about how your life has transpired since that moment. Yes. Yeah. Well, just uh, I'll preface this. Um, speaking of our last podcast, our first podcast, right at the end, so your viewers, listeners, whoever doesn't have to go back and go through that brain trauma. Um, you said something along the lines of let's re let's let's touch base and, and reevaluate or let's uh, let's check back in again. And the last thing I said was uh, they're going to be awesome, and it was not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was not uh... awesome. So there's there's the the preface. Okay, they are so... awesome once again. <laughs> so going back to what I just said, continue to reevaluate your yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's great. Uh, yeah, I do. But well, what happened? Back. Let me let me just give you the the skinny since yeah. uh, our last conversation. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Noah. Number two, I think he was like eight months. Lauren's eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, obviously that is like the pinnacle highlight there. Um, I think I've switched jobs twice and I've moved three times um, out of state. Technically twice. So. Just to give you an idea of some of the some of the moving parts just in the last two years it's been been pretty crazy 2021 was stressful it was to the max i was in the pits and then 2022 was we're going to recalibrate and that's exactly what it was mm -hmm. it's a 2023 upward and onwards there, there we, we go. go that is yeah. a very abridged version of of things yeah, that happen. I have a lot of a lot of color commentary to add between the lines, but I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, no, that's a good start. Thank you. Um yeah. back in our first conversation, we uh you you mentioned a formula that you were using and plan to use in your impending move, which was to make sure you have a a sight or visibility on working the home life balance right the work life balance rather and you said that you would ask Lauren to call you out on it, to hold you accountable to it how'd that go oh uh, she she certainly did and uh, she wasn't the only one i'll just say that okay <laughs> didn't, what, do you, didn't, what do you mean by that um just looking at my screen here but <laughs> it's a good thing we'll get to that later okay um yeah so the work life balance that was one of the things that was like what was perfect or near perfect in my life and that was it and that was one of my concerns moving taking a new job taking a job in a leadership role yep. yeah that didn't that didn't uh my my aspirational thinking of trying to maintain that balance even knowing that there was going to be some compromise um yeah that went down in flames that was mm. really a tough transition with the new job initially but then moving here and then sort of being entrenched in my new professional life at the time yeah there was not it's being generous to say there was really any room for that sort of balance um to the extent that while i was very conscious and intentional mm -hmm. of work hours um it didn't matter if i was at work or at home i couldn't necessarily turn my professional life off at all um couldn't enjoy the time i had with the people right in front of me uh mentally i just could not could not unplug mm. and went on for quite a while quite a while so um yeah it, it, lauren holding me accountable it was it was a a very regular daily sort of interaction um, and didn't even require words or conversation, mm -hmm. right? You come in and there are other factors outside of the job and, you know, it was living temporarily um, in rental houses, multiple houses, Airbnbs, hotels, <laughs> multiple homes uh, out of, you know, out of your car, essentially, as far as what, what material possessions you have. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot of factors where um, there's a lot of stressors that not only I felt, but the whole family was feeling. So, yeah, we had to get out of that. We did. Yeah, there was a lot in flux. For yeah, the just first a little bit. Just a bit. So what 
what so obviously you, you were concerned that it might come to fruition you didn't know the particulars how could you right of how it would actually play yeah. out you were you were concerned going into it that man i, I got to make sure this is in place and so much so i'm going to ask Lauren to hold me accountable and she did verbally non verbally the like what would you have done differently at what point yes you you choose it's revisionist history now so you can choose at any given mm. point what you would have done differently from the moment we recorded the last podcast so in hindsight 2020 uh um you know there was some writing on the wall and i'm trying to think i think when the podcast was recorded i had yet taken this new job and as i'm alluding to like the job was was the biggest crux, but it wasn't the only thing, but it was the biggest crux of a lot of this, you know, very stressful year time in my life, our lives here. Um, so in hindsight, even before, so I started the job and I think we had two, three months in Colorado before we moved to Portland. Uh, and there was some writing on the wall as to how that dynamic was going to seriously shift for me. Um, how so? And it, uh, just just the expectations of that position um, and some of some of the responsibilities that were put on me. Okay. And you mean I like talked spoken, like shared with you verbally, or that you was... both yeah, both. Um, yes and no, actually more no. I think at the time I'm I'm of the mindset, well, you're you're learning a new job, you're picking up like like a lot of people in a new job, there's so much to learn. But once you kind of get your feet under you, things will slow down a little bit. Once you're in an office with people versus working remote, you know, you're gonna start to get a rapport and fig, you know, get a get a good um get your stride. But I still felt that something something in that new position was just like I had some hesitancy even so much that um, it was in the last month that before we were moving, we were still in Colorado. I kept having this sort of buyer's remorse of, is this really the right step? Um, you know, we obviously moved forward, but in hindsight, maybe I, I should have. Uh, I, I, I had so many things going on. Our house was falling apart. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't just the job and like the typical things you're thinking about with a move. Wait, the house in which house is falling apart the, before you left Colorado? Our house in Colorado, figuratively, but uh, yeah, many, many things um, went wrong at an inopportune time when you're trying to sell a home, uh, which necessitated multiple moves out of the house. But um, what was I saying? Yeah, so in hindsight, what I what I wish I had done was been more open with some of the thoughts and these feelings that I had probably with Lauren, uh, even though Noah was like a month, six weeks old, and you don't have the space, or, nor like the mental capacity. At the time, this is my thought process, right? Sure. Like, sure, we have so much going on. Let's just get there, and then things will settle. Right. Um, in hindsight, maybe I probably should have reflected on some of these these just these feelings i had about what we were about to step into because it was it wasn't there, there was a, a long period of time where it wasn't too late to you know pull up if you will okay so, so is that the difference you think it might have made i don't think it would have made a difference i i still and just for everybody listening, I, I don't regret taking that job. I don't regret moving out here one bit, actually. Uh, as much as it was a stressful time in all of our lives, I learned more about myself professionally. I think us as a family personally, arguably than any other year ever. Um, it, there was a lot of growth. It, it wasn't all, it was very rarely, you know, rainbows and unicorns, but so I know it would it wouldn't have changed things, and I'm glad it didn't change things because sometimes you got to go through that experience to understand what you truly want. You, obviously, there's a few things I wish I didn't experience, and 
you know, could have cast aside, but, but it all happened for a reason. So. Yeah. So this maybe touches on your idea of reevaluating what it means to live intentionally. Do you feel like your any of your values shifted or what do you feel like to talk a little bit maybe about the growth yeah. that you experienced? What has shifted for you in your formula for living intentionally? My value in family shifted like realistically. Mm, yes. I think two talk years about that because I think two years ago previously. Oh my the whole time I did. Yeah. Um and I, I say realistically because it's not that I didn't mean it before, but I feel like it was more of a formality. Like, of course, family is the most important thing and my time is an important thing. Yes. But my actions didn't necessarily state that. And talking about accountability, um, go no further than talking to Lauren, <laughs> who will say, uh, you know, as I was in the process of going for this job that I was just talking about, which was the director position, leadership position. And she's like, I thought we we didn't want that at this time because the focus was on family. Now you're taking this leadership responsibility. It's counterintuitive. Well, I probably should have listened to that a little bit more. <laughs> but but you did it, right? Not because but I did it. you just were stubborn, but why? But why? Because I, well, I honestly maybe ignorantly thought that I'd come in and have my cake and eat it too in the sense that I'm walking into a new position and leadership position with people under me and hiring people, building a program. But I also have this internal value that I want to keep. And I also want to instill that sort of value if people align with it um, to make sure that they uh, feel the same way. So just trying to build this culture of, yeah, we're going to work hard, but play hard and whatever the play hard means for you, right? Whether it's family or whether you want to go travel or whether you just want to work more hours, right? If you're a workaholic and career is mm -hmm. that important, whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, what was the question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. What, 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 what you have me thinking here is this is wildly common, wildly common, right? And you you touched on it very directly, saying it's very easy to say family's a priority. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So easy to say that and believe it and believe it, right? It's not that it, we don't, when we say it, we don't, you know, we're not lying to yeah. ourselves, but you said realistically, like looking yeah. at logistically at our actions, at what shows up on the calendar, how we're spending our time. It's not common. It's not commonly reflected that way in many people's lives. Uh, and I and I would suggest that it's it's more challenging to do so. And and it sounds like you would agree with that. If if you put duct tape over my mouth, and I couldn't tell you that family and this, you know, work life balance was important, and you just looked at my actions, it would speak otherwise. I think it's kind of what you're saying, and that's that's where I was. Where yeah, I'm saying this, and I did believe it, but. Mm -hmm. I wasn't helping my cause by going down that route. Yeah. And I didn't know to the extent that I was, you know, going to, it was detrimental to this value of mine and my overall goal until you get into it. Right. But nobody does that. Um, but yeah. My, my actions did not necessarily uh, mirror what I wanted. That makes sense. It does make sense. May I, may I share a little bit about how I approach this with many of my clients. You have the floor. I have, but I'm asking permission for the purposes of this conversation now. Yes, you have my okay. permission. Wonderful. If not, I'm just going to kick you off the call. Great. Um, so to, because it's such a challenge for so many people, this comes up all the time, right? We identify a core value family. Shocker, right? However, Many, many people don't have a more specific instance of what that means or what that looks like for them. Just that I can't be at work all the time because I because family is a value, because I need to have work-life balance. But beyond that, most people don't have a picture of what that looks like. They don't have a metric, right? It's just, well, it can't infringe upon because that is not the most important thing. But inevitably, work comes in and overshadows so many different things. So 
an approach that I take and ask simply is what do you want to do with your family? How do you want to spend that time? And obviously you and I have had these conversations too, but it helps to plan for those specific instances and, and it makes it a little more real or realistic, hopefully, right? Where you can plan these specific units of family time, right? As opposed to just saying that family is mm -hmm. a benefit. Do you think something like that is or would be helpful? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's hard to, it's hard, it's, I shouldn't say it's hard, it's, you don't naturally come up with those sorts of metrics. I think it's just more of a con concept yeah. in your head, right? Totally, yeah. And I, that's where I stood, you know, when I took the new job and relocated was, well, to me, I guess my metric was the nine to five workday, which was a, a lot, a lot bigger or not, not necessarily actually, it was whatever it was. Um, but it wasn't, that wasn't good enough. It was just too broad where, okay, I'm just going to leave at a certain time and everything else will sort of fall in place because I just get in my car and leave. Mm -hmm. And that obviously was a little short-sighted. So, well, it just didn't, it didn't address the things that you talked about already. Like it didn't address the fact that mentally you would still be engaged with work, right? It didn't address the fact that maybe you would still be reachable or have to go back and do work from home or, or things like that. So yeah, I, I put this barrier, but, uh, nobody else saw, saw those fence posts, right? I, I, I had the eight to five or whatever it was, but yeah, that was just for me. That was just visible by me and nobody else. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. another thing too, right? It wasn't articulated. It, the expectation wasn't put out there to anybody else, any other stakeholders. No. So as far as they were concerned, you're available. Yeah. So what, from, from this growth period, what, what are you, what are you taking with you? What am I leaving behind is the question. All right. Well, you can do that too. Yeah. Tell, what are you leaving <laughs> behind? I don't have an answer. It's just my way of, uh, stalling <laughs> with a <laughs> rebuttal clip. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to edit that one out then. <laughs> okay. Darn. What's one thing I'm taking with me? Yeah. What are you taking? You don't have to limit it to one, but what's, uh, as far as like a practice, something, something pragmatic, something logistical, right? Because yeah. before you had kind of left it vague, right? Yeah. And so sure, you, you're taking some general thoughts with you, right? Yeah. There's, so I got two, I got two things yeah. um, that I find I currently do and I do it, do it successfully. Mm -hmm. One is, I say no to things. So I, I recently had this conversation with a colleague of mine where back in Colorado, I worked for an organization that was a yes organization in the sense that if there was an ask, yes, we'll do it. Yes, we'll fill that space. And it, it was all in the spirit of, you know, increased influence and respect and power, uh, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, this sort of build the value of the program. That was sort of that, that mindset was ingrained in me and I carried that to my next job. And that quickly caused me to burn out because I was saying yes, to everything for, you know, all those same reasons, those reasons yeah. especially building a new program was a new sort of program I was responsible for building. I just, you know, got flew too close to the sun. Um, so that's one thing that since then I've learned to say no. And the thing I've learned is that it's not a negative. And actually I was surprised by how supportive people are when you do put up those fence posts that I was talking about before. And you have, they're, they're, as long as, as long as you're holding your end up, uh, your, your, your end of the bargain up and you're performing well and you're a good teammate and all that sort of thing, you can't be a dirt bag necessarily and just say no to everything. You're going to get flushed as a mm -hmm. talk about a job. But, um, at some point, everybody has a carrying capacity. Um, and when your cup starts spilling over, well, the other things are, you know, there's a sacrifice there, whether it's your personal performance, your work, uh, most likely it's spilling onto other people on your team or across your organization or your family, right? 
So there's there's cascading negative impacts. So it's it's saying no. And the second thing, which I think is sort of falls into a line with this this general theme is putting the um so going back to the, the, the theme of family being the core value, when I have something with the family as far as responsibility, I just put it out there as far as, well, this isn't negotiable. I am taking Aiden to school Tuesday mornings, work around my schedule. I have to go to this doctor's appointment or Lauren has something, so I'm watching Noah, whatever the case is. There's there's no longer an ask or a negotiation. I sort of just put it out there um, in a respectful way, in the in the same lens that I'm not, you know, pushing, um, you know, downstream impacts, uh, you know, my problems onto somebody else. Right? As long as you mm-hmm. balance it on on your own, what I've done intentionally, I'll say that word one more time before we end, mm-hmm. is I just I there, there's I just I'm not afraid to bring that up in, you know, meetings get scheduled and I'll just decline and say, nope, I'm not doing it because of this reason or that reason. Uh, we have a deadline. Uh, no, I can't do it because of this reason or that reason. So those are two things that I've taken from my experience and I currently apply that, again, is received very well. Um, and I think that it's surprising to me, but after you do it, it's like it shouldn't be surprising at all because... If anybody has that same sort of value, they're going to not only appreciate it, but maybe they'll want to do the same thing a little bit too, or they have done it and they want to support you in the same regard. And that's what I found. So. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. 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 So I'm hearing that you articulated these fence posts, fence posts, right? You shared them aloud, which is a big difference, right? Before you had kind of kept them to yourself. I'm like, eh, obviously I'm going to leave, yeah. right? Which not as enforceable. So you have that additional layer of accountability with that. And you're also sharing that it is not a foregone conclusion that by saying no, you are a dirt bag automatically. You are not a piece of garbage. You're not going to get flush automatically. And because you're saying no to things, because family appointments are non-negotiable moving forward, and because you have the value of having a strong work ethic and integrity, you will do whatever you need to do at work to be the worker you want to be while still insisting upon family is the priority. You said it better, but. Well, I was just parroting what I heard. But is yeah. that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's pretty powerful. It feels good. Good. Yeah, it's great. And you're absolutely right that people will respect it. And if they don't, see you later. Who cares? Right? Do it anyway. Because it matters to you. Because it's in line with your values. Right? And you're going to act in a way that reflects your values, right? So you're going to be the coworker you want to be. You're going to be the family member you want to be, right? And if that person has an issue with it, then that is that person's issue. Yeah, well, tale of two cities where I've experienced both. And one, that's fine. I'll, I'll pack my bags and good luck to you. And the other one, you know, it's an organization that I'm proud to be a part of, you know, because they support me in that regard. So, yeah. Yeah. And those are not easy decisions to make, but it seems like it becomes very clear once you are living in alignment with your values. Yeah. Crystal. Awesome. So when you started saying no, something maybe you weren't doing so much before because it wasn't part of the culture or an or is counter to the culture. What was it like as you do you remember like when you were practicing doing it, when you first started doing it? What was that like? Yeah, it was it, I didn't just you know, show up on Monday and start doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it. It took a little transition period where you do have to sort of, I don't want to say the word credibility, but yeah. there needs to be that rapport and that trust that's built. You can't come yeah. in and sort of dictate or call shots because okay. it, you probably won't be as supported. Um, so I, I think there's that this process where um, you need to build trust i'll use that word again mm-hmm. uh, with your team and allow them to know who you are and know what you're going to get if you allow me these sort of comforts sure. um, which so, is a bet which is better you, you just 
you're you're a better person, you're a better teammate, everything like that. Um, but yeah, it didn't happen day one necessarily. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> so it, it makes sense there might be some healthy skepticism of someone who comes in day one saying, I'm not going to be able to work between these hours and these hours, right? And they're like, who the heck, who the heck is this joker, right? So I think what you're talking about is building building some equity, right? You come yeah. in and you, you kind of prove yourself, prove your worth um, while still maintaining visibility and what matters to you and in your values, right? Yeah, and that um, equity needs to be currency that's, um, you know, uh, recognized by your organization too, which it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. there's the other side of the coin to continue to use money funds. There we um, go. Yeah, but yeah, you you can start to kind of go go that route, but it needs it needs to be felt and understood and realized as uh, it needs to be supported. You know? Yeah. So it's a two way street, and if it's not, then um, you know. There needs to be discussions around what's what's best for you. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So so big theme here of the transformation, the growth, right? Living family as a value as opposed to just stating it as a value. Right. That seems to have happened in a in a very good way. Uh previously when we talked about habits and we talked about things that have had exponential payoff. You alluded to, um, you talked a lot about the, the use of technology and being present with family. And, you know, previously you lived geographically in a space that just kind of made your choices for you in a lot of ways, right? What, what exists around that habit or what, uh, yeah, what exists, wh where does that currently lie with you? Yeah. Um, kind of silly things, but I think it sort of holds true to how I still try to do that. No, I, I have cell phone towers. I live in a more, I live in society now versus the, the boondocks, right? right? Or I was before. Um, but I turned my, I turned my phone on airplane mode. So I think last time we spoke, I lost cell phone coverage, which is a good thing safety wise. So, <laughs> but uh, it, it sort of put me in that mindset of getting off my phone and just looking you know, not through a lens, but what's in front of me. And so when I, uh, when I do get home, which is right now 20 feet across my backyard to my back door. Uh, yeah. I, what's that? I'm sorry. I know what you're talking about, but that sounds really weird and random. <laughs> like you, 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 your office is next door. I, I, I'm, I'm right now in my office, which is a, a separate building plop dab in the middle of my backyard. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank um, you for clarifying. Yeah. Thank you. Good catch. Uh, what was I saying? My phone. Yeah. Yeah. I turn on airplane mode, which is great. Let's turn on airplane mode. And I wear a watch. I, I, I had this watch. I got this watch as a, as a best man gift for my, my buddy Doug. Doug, if you're listening, still wearing it. But I bring up the watch because every time you want to see what time it is, I would take out my phone. Everyone takes out their phone. And once you take out your phone to see that it's, you know, this time of day, um, it's really easy to then swipe and open up your email or open up something else. So the little thing, but I actually wear a watch now. And mm -hmm. I look at the time and I keep my phone maybe in my pocket or on the on the counter. So I still like I think I have some pretty good habits. I may not, you know, be off the grid as I once was mm -hmm. uh when we when we last talked. But I think uh that's sort of a habit that kind of aligns with that's that that sort of intentionality. It's the third time I'll say it. Yeah, I'm trying I'm to do. Giving account, don't worry. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so speaking of awesome, it's a word you use to describe how how life would be, right? When when we, <laughs> when we last. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it it is. I it was is. awesome <laughs> until I hung up the phone. Yeah. And then it was shitty for about a year. <laughs> but then it got awesome again. And then it got awesome again. So 
Okay, so I got to throw a line in there because you half promised there was indirect promise that you and I would get to run a race together. Hmm. You know, that was that was kind of thrown out there. Yeah. How did that go? How how was that race that we did together? I'm, well, I'm still an aspiring uh, race runner as I am okay. rock star drummer. Yeah. But I do run more frequently than I did before. That is a fact. That is a fact where if I go out running today, I am not going to be sore for the next five days, maybe just one day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, yeah, I plan, I plan to run a race with you, Joe, in the next year, just so I can finally get the monkey off my back. Hey, so yeah, those are some words to write down. Okay. Uh, the, the mileage will be uh 5k mm -hmm. or less, <laughs> not 50k okay. or more. Okay. Okay. It's negotiable. That sounds fabulous. I'll 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 leave it at that. I'll quit while I'm ahead. How about your um new habits or your new hobbies? Yeah. Rock rock star drum and talk to me about yeah. that. Yeah. Never picked up the chopsticks in my life. But last year I just wanted a, a new hobby. Um and yours truly sort of uh, encouraged me to start taking drum lessons. And actually, I literally just got a text, even though I say I'm never on my phone. Um, my my drum teacher uh, needs to reschedule. But so I take drum lessons every Wednesday. It's so much fun. So much fun. Um, started about a year ago. I've been doing it every Wednesdays. I go to a local music shop and this young kid, David, uh, teaches me drums. And I got my electric drum kit right here, so I don't keep up the neighbors or the kids. But Aiden and Noah come in here and they whack at the drum set with a stick. It's just so much fun. So, yeah, it's been it's been really fun, really refreshing, um, very challenging. It's a mm. lot harder than you think. At least I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, moving out here, there's been a lot of other fun sort of activities. I wouldn't say they're hobbies, for instance, uh, per se, but mm -hmm. you know, proximity to the ocean that we didn't have before. Uh, we've gone crabbing, we've gone clamming, clam digging, just just a hoot. Uh, one of our favorite pastimes now, not that we do it often, because it's still you know an hour and a half and change from the coast, is going tide going to tide pools, tide pooling. So these yeah. tide pools. Um, kind of come into themselves when the tide goes out and there's starfish everywhere and sea anemones and crabs and you know fish and it's uh it's kind of our favorite pastime we're gonna go next weekend probably we're going out to the coast to go camping so we'll go tide pooling so i'm good that's awesome yeah what was <laughs> you had shared a story with me recently you had gone to an airbnb you attempted it was it was more specific than tide pooling you went out like middle of the night yeah, I was climbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you share so, that story? <laughs> yeah. So this just I I'll I'll forget a few details, but yeah, it's a good story. Um has to do with me needing a watch or being <laughs> knowing that I need to tell time a little bit. So uh this these these like two or three types of clams we we're we we're looking to dig are best in this bay, and you have to go at low tide. Uh, and so I looked at the tide chart and um, what the heck, whatever the bay was, I, look, I looked up the tide chart and uh, come to find out there's, there's a city of the same name in California. So I looked up the tide chart for California and we're in Oregon. And so uh, luckily Lauren like looks at the tide chart again. She's like, Justin, I don't think the tide's going out at five o'clock or six o'clock. Uh, it looks like it's a lot later. I'm like, no, no, no. I looked at it. Um, come to find out instead of like a late afternoon clamming, uh, clam digging session, uh, the tides didn't go out until like 8.30 at night. And so, you know, you with young kids, know that, well, it's kind of like bedtime or even past bedtime. But we didn't care. We pulled the boys out and we, yeah, we were at Airbnb. It was like 10 minutes away. So that wasn't bad. But we went night clam digging and we were not fit at all to be clamming for the first time with you know our iphones at least we had a couple uh flashlights of the airbnb but we got four clams and we were happy as pig and shit yeah to get that why did i say happy as a clam out. i guess you just wanted to skip over uh, that one. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, alley oop. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was awesome. It was so much fun. I mean, Noah fell asleep within five minutes. So all the pictures we have, and he's just like passed out and Lauren's back. She was schlepping him, but yeah, yeah it was so much fun. Yeah. We need to do that again. Nice. That sounds like it. Have Lauren yeah. check the tie chart first. Yeah. Yeah. Check it twice. Yeah. 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 And then we, and then we walked out of the bay and couldn't find our car. So we were, <laughs> I don't know if I told you this. It's like dark and there's this little frontage road. We're walking maybe just a quarter mile in the wrong direction. Um, and eventually like we think our car, our car's been stolen because there's nobody out here. Oh, it's terrible. We found, we turned around and found the car, but yeah, a bunch of amateurs yeah. on the Oregon <laughs> coast. It's, it's, a, it's a hell of a first time. That's great. It was, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. That's we awesome. took them home, cleaned them. We ate them and we, went, we did the whole thing. So. It's good. Nice. Ended up successful. That's great. Yeah, it was. So moving forward, you got some things on the horizon. Talk to me through the lens of intentionality, of course, when you got yeah. going on. All right. I wrote this down mm-hmm. because, and this will be probably the last time I reference our first podcast. I said, and I quote in 2021, the perfect world will be you're not working and you get to spend time with your family all the time. So I've decided to do that unintentionally. Said that just once. Um, I'm taking a family gap year slash sabbatical in August. We are. And I'm taking work off, maybe not for the whole year, but I think probably for the first big chunk of it. And we are going to be doing a bucket list item that Lauren and I have only been thinking about, talking about for years um and we're we're just doing it we pulled the trigger we decided to do it back in january and so i'm just so excited so excited so we're going to be wheels up in august and we're going to be starting out sign r until until july next year we're going to be doing a little world tour Mm -hmm. and what are some of the stops along this world tour oh yes um the big four will be living two to three months at a time. So if anybody wants to come visit the car text, open invitation to anyone that listens to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I'll, love it. Just check in with me first and make sure that you're not. Yeah, I'll be character. sure to list your you, uh, contact. You won't stay with us. Uh, we may see you though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Friends and family will start there. And if you want to be our friend, Say hi first. There we go. We're going to Greece. We're going to the island of Syros for three months. And then we're going to be in Australia for two months, New Zealand for two months, and Bali for three months. And we'll have some stopover countries to and from all these spots just to kind of break it up and see the world a little bit. Mm -hmm. Expose the boys to new food, new cultures take a break from the cycle, even though, you know, I sort of alluded to my current organization, how they align and support a lot of my values. Um, we're looking forward to just not having, uh, you know, those restrictions around work and having not just work, but, you know, even school and just routines just sort of restrict us. We want to just kind of break away and, uh, further recalibrate, if you will. Um, where we want to be. So we're going to take the next year and travel all over and see where that is and what we want to be doing. So exciting. Spectacular. Yeah. 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 It's going to be awesome. I promise you this time it will be (laughs) awesome. (laughs) Spoken with the confidence of your, your former self. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay, good. Yeah. uh, You touched on something ever so lightly, but I I, kind of want to call it out. Um, your current organization, you actually enjoy it and you enjoy the culture. And I think that's important to to call out because one doesn't need to leave a job because it is awful, right? That's not the only reason to step away, right? And try something new, try something else. Um, it, it is a common way, right? But I think, uh, I think, I think that was important that you, you called that out that, 
you know, you do enjoy your current current organization and work yeah. you do. Yeah, I work with great people. And I would actually say to that comment that it's probably easier easier to jump in whether you're taking a year off or anything. Mm-hmm. If you just want to take a break, um, I would say it's probably easier to jump off from an organization that you do align with, that you do enjoy versus one that's not. Yeah, you might be right. Might be right. I don't know. What fears do you have about this upcoming trip? Gosh, they're so petty. Um, And it's not, I don't have any fears other than, you know, acquiring a a flesh eating disease in Mm -hmm. Indonesia or something like that. But I I don't fear that. Right. Um, No, I don't have any fears. I I don't think I have any, it's going to be so much work. Not every day is going to be wonderful. And so just so for everybody listening, we're not, you know, going to be jumping around to, you know, see the sites every single day. Our intention is slow travel in the sense that you sort of just live in, in, you know, some cases work and go to school. Ian's going to be going to school in a couple of these spots. So it's very much, you just uproot your lives in one place and, you know, put some temporary roots into another. So, um, so even though it's not going to be like, go, 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 we have a full agenda every day. There's still going to be days that are just crazy like we are having right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not a fear. Um, you know, is our, our aspect of logistics going from Greece to Bangkok, Thailand going to be stressful? I bet they are, you know, jet lag is going to be a, you know, what, especially with little ones, but yeah, I don't fear anything. The fear, the fear is to, 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 to look at the other way. And Lauren, I have, because after you make the decision, after we made this decision, there's this sort of, oh my gosh, we did it. We're, we've jumped off the high dive, but we've yet to hit the water. That's where we are. Mm. Not so much anymore, but in the initial weeks and I would say a couple months after that, we're like, was this the right decision? And we keep coming back to, damn right it was. Because yeah. we're not going to, I, I bet my life on it. When we get back, I'm, we're, we're, none of us are going to have any regret that we did yeah. this. Yeah. Any regret. The only regret we would, would have is if we didn't do it. And that's yeah. where we were for, you know, a number of years where we thought, oh, this would be awesome. You know? So, yeah. So no that's fear. Love Remember it. the old t-shirts that said no fear? I do. Yeah. 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 I, no fear. I feel like you could still see those somewhere. Maybe Beautiful boy. Show. Yeah. <laughs> so is it true the rumor I heard that you were considering, uh, Reengaging with social media for the purposes of uh, <laughs> yeah, tracking, true. And tracking memories. Yeah, so um, I actually it's it's confirmed, though uh, I don't know what I'll do with it. Yeah. I I logged into my Facebook account for the first time in eight years, <laughs> and actually it took me three days because they were going to dissolve my account and they had to do something to validate whatever. So yeah. I couldn't just log in but they let me in and uh, I haven't been on the site for eight years. So I've logged into Facebook, come to find out nobody, uh, at least of my circles really uses Facebook anymore. It's no longer what it was. It's now yeah. Instagram, I think. So yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, we're going to do some, we're going to do some social media. You know, I'm going to le- be leaning on Lauren because she's, she's really good about that. And sure. the only, uh, the only way people know what I'm doing is through her now. So, right. I'll be riding her coattails, but yeah, excellent. I'll be, uh, I'll be coming out of darkness. Yeah. Excellent. So perhaps, you know, we can chat about putting your, your, uh, socials in the links so that people can follow your adventures. Yeah. Well, on, uh, they're, they're not, there's really nothing there right now. It's no, I understand. Content. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's part of the excitement. People will see it grow from nothing. Yes. I'm back. What was, what, what was your last uh, status update or your last post and uh i don't know what it, what oh the one actually i do um lauren and i went to a winery with our friends scott and gentry in denver in 2015 shortly after lauren and i got married was the last picture i had like in august or september of 20 uh 2015 mm-hmm. so yeah just curious well brother uh we have come to that time 
Uh, is there any final thoughts you would like to share in the name of intentionality? Mm. For my lovely wife who's listening, I will say to Lauren, um, even though I don't give her credit, listening to people around you and allowing them, hold, having them hold you accountable uh, is very important. So being receptive to that. You've uh, been one of those people for me as well, Joe. So um, is intentional, that's four. I went over my limit. As you wanna be with what you wanna do, uh, making sure that that is communicated and felt by those around you, your inner circle, whoever that is, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, kids, whoever, um, and allowing them to be supporters and champions of that goal. And there's probably gonna be some alignment, right? Whatever you're trying to achieve, is probably going to be a benefit or align with something they're trying to do too. So I would say that. Solid. Rock solid. Yeah. Thank you for joining me for being the first ever, second ever on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time and your thoughts. You. And, uh, and uh, I actually get to see you soon. So that'll be delightful. I'm looking forward to that. Too. Me too. And if we do a trilogy, even though trilogies usually don't turn out very well, Godfather Part 3, not yes. so good. Uh, but it's going to be awesome. It Call will it. be awesome. It will yep. be awesome. All right, brother. Thanks again. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. This has been Intentionally Ever After, hosted by intentional lifestyle coach Joe Bukartek. If you would like to have your own intentional conversation with Joe on or off the air, visit intentionallyeverafter.com. Thanks for listening.